Welcome back, traders and investors. We like to bring you breaking news and breaking opinions, but we like to bring in someone here, Mark Mellon, who we discussed this Argentinian debt situation with before. He's the author of Value Walk, Alternative Investment Practitioner. Mark, how you doing this morning? I'm uh, doing great today, Joel. How are you? Good. So this news hits the tape, shakes up the S&P market. I know you've been following the situation closely. I'm going to turn the mic over to you and uh, get your you get your view on this uh, short term and long term. Okay. Well, first off, as a trader, what you really want to do is be watching the risk points. I particularly like to take a look at the risk points the top hedge fund managers are watching. And there has been talk about this Argentinian situation for quite some time. So the issue isn't just Argentina. It's about what could potentially happen next, because there are a lot of other countries looking at Argentina as an example. And what isn't really being reported as much is that this is the first time a major foreign power is starting to compete with the United States, and that being Russia and China. If you follow the currency trading at all, you're going to know that people have been talking about Russia and China trying to displace the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of choice. If you're a fundamental trader, you want to be paying attention to this. And so what a lot of people are looking at is Argentina is potentially a benchmark in the point where Argentina can just say no mas to the U.S. and Western-based financial system because the big threat that the, that the powers that be have always had is the threat of freezing out another country from the financial system. Like it's well, now there are other options, and that's really you know, what a lot of this default is all about. Uh, if you remember on your last show, I said yeah, Argentina is not going to negotiate. If they do, it, they're going to throw out something very small, but they're not going to give, and there's going to be an Argentinian default wrote about it, maybe five, seven different articles, said exactly the same thing, and that's exactly what's happened. Now, the key is, where's the future going? And I'm going to talk about a couple things that, again, aren't being reported. Number one, the IMF is likely to scold the U.S. courts, I'm told. And they're going to issue a white paper. It takes about two, three weeks to try and resolve this. For those of you who followed the Argentinian situation closely, there was a point where Argentina in court had said, we want to stay, we want you to hold off on your decision because there are going to be some global developments that may occur. These are the global developments. So as a result of this whole Argentinian situation, what you really want to be doing as a trader is watching how it unfolds. Is it going to be the U.S. that is frozen out of the world? Or is it going to be Argentina that's frozen out of the world? And I think you have to look at this issue from a trader's standpoint and how you can benefit and how you can protect yourself against risk. Okay. And how do we do that? How do we uh, protect ourselves against this risk? Uh, okay. Well, now we're starting to get into an uncorrelated investment discussion, which is like my favorite topic. <laughs> okay. um, I, I have been a big advocate of investments that are not correlated with the performance of the stock market. I wrote a book about it um, and, and have continually advocated. You have to look at the performance driver and at the market environment that an investment is correlated to. So I've been involved in a lot of quantitative managed futures investments, uh, taught, about, uh, taught a course on this at Northwestern University. So what you need to do is get a percentage of your portfolio in assets that are completely uncorrelated to the performance driver of economic strength. Because you don't know when this is going to hit. No one does. I, I, we talked about this last time. I, I gave my best guesses 2015. I, I wrote an article about Larry Robbins from Glenview. He was saying it's not going to happen in 2014. Um, I wrote another article about Paul Singer from Elliott Management. And he's, he's concerned about the derivatives blow up. So everyone is watching this. You, you're not going to get in the mainstream media, I guarantee you that. These are the discussions that matter. Um, and these are the discussions that are taking place right now that I think your listeners need to be in on. Okay, so you, you tweeted out earlier that the default isn't really a default. Just dig into that a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, guess what? It involves the big banks. So what does that mean? Well, that means everything's rigged in their favor. Do you remember the, the 
default in the Mediterranean where, you know, magically, even though they defaulted on their debt, magically, it didn't pay off. Well, this all comes to an organization called ISTA, which is the organization that's going to officially declare a default. So I talked to a contact at ISDA yesterday, and I said, Mark, a default has not happened yet because one of our members, these are the big banks, AIG, uh, the ones who are insuring the, the credit default, you know, through credit default swaps, one of our members has to notify us that there is a potential default, and we have to rule on it. So it's not a default until we say it's a default, and one of our members comes forward and puts that on the table in a formal setting. My sources tell me that has not happened as of yet. They're still going to try and negotiate some backroom deal, um, but here, here's the thing. Argentina is likely not to budge, and there are some private banks that have come into play, and, you know, Argentina as a government is not going to be caught giving money to Argentine banks to pay off Elliott because then it triggers for all their bondholders. So these, there's, you hear a lot of talk in the press about how there are these big deals coming in. Someone said someone offered a 100% par. That's ridiculous. The offers that have come in from Argentina are nothing. It's essentially like they're saying goodbye to the U.S. This is like a thumb in the nose to the U.S. that they didn't even negotiate. Okay, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna say one thing, and then I'm gonna let Garrett go, and then you can respond to both. But you know, we're looking for a catalyst. We're looking something to take the market lower. Um, is this gonna be the straw that broke the camel's back in the U.S. market? And before you answer, let Garrett hop in here with a quick question too. Okay, <laughs> okay, Mark. Mark. Hey, Garrett. Mark, what's going on, man? Long time no talk. How much? I uh, now I wrote about two years ago on sovereign debt uh, immunity, and I addressed the Argentina situation in December of 2001 and the situation about the hedge funds looking to recuperate losses that they had on bonds that were issued by Argentina. It's, right. It seems like this scenario, at least from my perspective, is it's going to be more of a more of a legal viewpoint where Argentina is going to be able to either default on their bonds and use the excuse that maybe it was activity that was designed to work with the central bank as opposed to actual sovereign nation risk taking and i'm wondering if there's going to be a lot of lawsuits coming out of this if there's going to be hedge funds that are stuck holding you know holding these bonds from argentina and if they're going to be able to sue to recuperate or if argentina is really just using this as a means to dump off its ugly debt through you know a term called litigation arbitrage well, I think you're very uh, astute to point out to the litigation arbitrage, uh, Garrett, because that hits the core of uh, this issue. You know, what Argentina is talking about doing is restructuring the debt outside of New York. Um, New York is, could become a pariah for a sovereign bond debt uh, offerings. And if you go to Frankfurt and sign a bond debt, they do not allow, and the issue with the, with the legal issue is when the hedge funds came in after the default occurred and after an agreement was signed between all the bondholders, the hedge funds bought the debt of the bondholders. And then they tried to renegotiate what had already been agreed upon. That is the core legal issue that Argentina uh, is looking at right now. And if you look at that legal issue, just take everything else from the debate apart and look at that legal issue, that is what they say in Germany is illegal. That's what they say in France is illegal. You go to London, and they will sign the agreements, all say what the hedge funds have done is illegal in other jurisdictions, just not in the United States. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that's the big thing I'm looking at here. And I, uh, Some of the guys in the Benzinga chat have the article that I put up, and I put it on Twitter. And It's definitely a very interesting case, the legalities around all this and what's going on. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. Okay, Mark, so then let's just, I mean, you know, we could talk about all these things with Argentina, and I know you're following everything, but, you know, let's just try it here for a second, focus on the U.S. markets here. It's taking it on the chin here. You've had going through earnings season and stuff, longstanding bull market here. Does this, is, does some an event like this make you reevaluate your holdings in the United States? And how should people look at this? I mean, 15-point drop in the S&Ps is pretty big. Uh, hey, we're still, I mean, if you think about it, if you want to take your chips off the table here, if you've been in this market for five years, you know, no worries, right? 
what what what's your, um, your take and, on the and U.S. Joel, market? Have you ever been in a market where there are no worries? <laughs> have you ever been in a market where there aren't cycles? I mean, this is to to, to old time market watchers who have been playing this game for a while. And all of a sudden, you know, the Fed starts to take control of the market devices to a degree no one has ever seen before. And then, you know, there used to be nice trends in the market. That's why managed futures and that's why trend following has done so well. The Fed has taken out the trends. The Fed has taken out the volatility. Um, but there are ways to play this. And I think what we're going to see is some volatility. A lot of my vol players that I talk to are looking for enhanced volatility. Once the Fed pulls off the levers of control, they're not going to have the, the markets will go back to being volatile. They'll go back to trending. So, you know, as a trader, you really want to be watching these market environment shifts. And then, you know, this is this is you know uh, what uh, what they do up at Witten. They have algorithms that determine the market environment, and then they change their trading strategy based on the market environment. So you look at a lot of these uncorrelated guys. They're not just trend following. But sometimes they'll throw in uh, some relative value. Sometimes they'll throw in a carry trade. Sometimes they'll throw in uh, some short volatility, but it's all based on when the market environment is right for that strategy. Okay. All right. So you're just you're, you're taking this with a grain of salt then here. You're going to see how the scenario plays out. You're not going to hit the panic button yet then, right? No, and I don't know that. I mean, here's my attitude on the panic button. I don't know that panic's the thing you want to do. Um, I tend to think that right now what people need to do is look to some of the top hedge fund players and how they manage their portfolios. They are not 100% long. You know, I would advise right now a 60-40 mix. And what I mean by 60-40, my definition, is 60% assets correlated to economic strength and 40% uncorrelated. Now, you know, I'd be looking at so there are some bond funds you can buy uh, where, where the fund managers have actually looked at the debt crisis. They've done the same math that Paul Singer's done, that Ray Dalio's done, that a lot of the quantitative guys have done on the, on the U.S. debt crisis. You know, that's really the major fuse, and you would ask about triggers. That's, that's one of the triggers we're keeping an eye on. Okay, Mark, thanks a lot. I'm glad that we caught you, um, you know, and to be able to comment on this. This is going to be an ongoing situation. We appreciate your expertise. We're definitely going to have you on again soon. Thanks for being available. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for being thanks, available guys. at the last second, Mark. We really appreciate it. No problem. Okay.